Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1. I have two YouTube channels, don't ask me why, but I start things off on ETCG1 with, hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday, please enjoy this digital cake I found for you. For today's video, I'd like to talk about, well, a topic that, I, well, I kind of went down a rabbit hole a few days ago and I learned a bunch of stuff. And honestly, the older I get, the more I realize that I don't know Jack Monkey Squat. And I, I guess I'm, I'm coming to accept that. But anyway, I learned a bunch of stuff. And this all stems from the research that I was doing uh, about catalytic converters and, and what happens to them. So they stole the catalytic converter out from in front of my shop and then I'm like, well, where's all this going? Well, I eventually found myself researching exhaust and replacement exhaust and how this whole thing works. And I found out that, well, all the cars that I built are illegal. Yes, that's true. According to the Clean Air Act, the cars that I've built and modified are illegal. You can't do it. And the way the law is written, it basically says that any tampering of the emission system, uh, even if you change the, you have to put it back to the way the manufacturer made it or else you're not in compliance. Uh, so if you're a repair shop or something like that, and there were a whole list of things, I'm gonna link this stuff down in the description for you to read through it. But say if you're a repair shop and a customer comes in with uh, a vehicle that they change the engine, they put a set of headers on it, and they want to put dual exhaust on it. Well, sorry, if that vehicle did not come with dual exhaust from the factory, that shop is not allowed to put an exhaust on it for you with dual exhaust. They have to put it back to original. All the original catalytic converters, all the original components, everything has to go on exactly the way it was when it was made from a factory, period. And the reason I'm parked in front of the Factory 5 here is because it gets even more interesting when you start talking about kit cars. Well, because the engine that's going into this, I suspect is around a 9092, it needs to comply to emission standards for a 1990-92. Let's go around the shop, I'll share some more stuff with you. The Fairmont is the most illegal vehicle I have. And it's not just because I didn't run a catalytic converter on it, and it's not just because it has an exhaust cutout, but it's because I put a V8 in it. Even though these cars came from the factory with V8 engines, it's still illegal to take out a six cylinder and replace it with a V8. So if the vehicle originally came with a six cylinder, it's always supposed to have a six cylinder and all its emission components attached to that engine. Sadly, the truck transmission is toast at the moment. That's why it's over here on wheels. Anyway, this truck is also illegal. Despite the fact that it has the original engine block and it has the original exhaust configuration and I put a catalytic converter on it, it's still illegal. Why? Because it's not original equipment stuff because it no longer has an EGR. I would argue that the multi-port fuel injection and the catalytic converter that I've put on it now are more efficient than it was in 1990, and it probably gets better emissions. However, it's still out of compliance. My Type R is sadly also illegal. I've replaced the entire exhaust system. Even though I installed a catalytic converter, it's not the same catalytic converter that it was installed on it at the factory. Here's something funny about this. This car actually had a check engine light on and it was for catalytic converter efficiency below threshold. After replacing it with the new catalytic converter and new exhaust system, that check engine light went away. So I improved the emissions of this vehicle, but because those are not original parts, those do not comply with the factory back pressure and everything, that was another thing I ran into. Back pressure was a big thing that they kept bringing up over and over again. But because it's not the same, because I altered it, it's illegal. Now the GSR is falling into something of a gray area because all I did was put an exhaust header on this. Everything else is the same. It's got the original converter and everything else on it. But because I changed this exhaust header, it's kind of in a gray area. Now SEMA, the Specialty Equipment Marketing Association, they have that big show in Vegas every year. In fact, it's the second largest show Vegas has. You know, it's only second to CES, which is the Consumer Electronics uh, show that they have there. But SEMA is the second largest show to go through Vegas, and that's saying something. It's a multi-billion dollar business, the aftermarket industry, that sells all these parts that I've installed on these cars and truck. How can they get away with it? How have they been doing this all these years? And how was I able to just do this? Well, 
I think it's a lot like marijuana legislation where certain states are just selling it where it's still illegal under federal law. So I don't have any emissions testing in the area where I am here in Ohio, but that's not true for all of Ohio. Some other places have emissions testing as, as part of their uh, inspection process. If I lived in one of those areas, I imagine I'd have to be in compliance a little bit more. Now I'm gonna argue, I don't drive these vehicles every day and they're, you know, they pollute more than a normal vehicle, but I can't drive them all at once and I don't drive them all the time. They're not my daily. I daily like a, an element mostly, so that's in full compliance as far as you know <laughs> when I put the new catalytic converter on it uh, that's another story I'm sure you've seen the video by now SEMA is really trying right now with this RPM act uh, that's trying to combat some of the crackdown that the EPA is making on motorsports according to what the EPA is saying now you cannot take a vehicle that was manufactured to be driven on the road and convert it into a race vehicle even though that's never gonna see public roads or anything like that the EPA says, no, you can't do that. And that's for racing. <laughs> now, what about the rest of us that are hobbyists, that are just wanting to make our cars, cars and trucks cool, maybe a little faster, maybe a little more horsepower, maybe make them handle a little better. According to what I'm reading, all that stuff is illegal and has been for years. And SEMA's fighting hard right now just to keep it in motorsports. How long do you think it's gonna be before they go after enthusiasts? And how many businesses are gonna go under as a result of this? How many American businesses that have been making performance parts for years and years and years that people have been buying that, that have little stickers that say, this is California certified, you know, you can put this on your vehicle and all that other kind of thing. You know, EPA certified, all this kind of stuff. There's little disclaimers. If if you really read it uh, in the stuff that you're buying that says that under certain laws or whatever this cannot be operated uh, on the roads or there, there's certain legal ease that they're writing into the text somewhere that is allowing them to get away with this my question is how much longer how much longer are we going to get away with this I mean there's this real push for what I've been talking about for years with the motor law there seems to be a real push lately now this Pushed by EPA most recently, I think in 2017 it was, is really targeted towards uh, trucks and heavy equipment and you know larger vehicles. They aren't really talking so much about passenger vehicles now. And this may be evident by what recently happened with the Diesel Brothers. Now, if you're familiar with this, the Diesel Brothers recently got fined big time. I think it was well over a million dollars that they had to pay. They had to pay the court costs of the plaintiffs and everything else. Uh, for this, but they got in big trouble for selling trucks that they had modified or modifying trucks, uh, you know, putting chips in them for more power, that kind of thing, uh, rolling coal, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they got busted big time for this. And, and I'm wondering about these speed shops because if you can't modify a vehicle at all, it has to be put back to original, then where's the custom car world? What can you do? I mean, <laughs> Paint jobs is it's kind of about what you reduce to, but as far as modifying for performance and anything like that, technically that's illegal and has been for a while. But yet we've been going on and on like, like nothing all this time. And like I said, all these businesses are entrenched. They've established. They, they're multi-million dollar businesses that are out there that could go under if they can't sell their wares any longer. I'm nervous. And, you know, maybe that's what I get for going down a rabbit hole on the internet and doom scrolling, if you will, <laughs> trying to learn all this stuff. But, man, I, I, I pulled in a lot of information. And like I said, it's caused me to rethink a lot of things because I spent all this time, effort, and money in building these things. I wanna be able to drive and enjoy them. If there comes a day where they're like, sorry, can't drive that on the road anymore, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Uh, maybe that's where the electric uh, revolution will come in and people will start electrifying vehicles to bypass the whole emissions thing. So zero emissions vehicle, I can do what I want, right? Eh, good luck with that, good luck with that. Anyway, links in the description to some of the disturbing discoveries that I make. Also a link in the description to help out with the RPM Act. I mean, we need to get behind SEMA. We need to get behind organizations like them that are fighting for our rights to continue to do this type of thing. Because, well, the way things are going, I kind of wonder if we will be able to do this kind of thing for much longer. I think the motor law might become a real deal. And that would suck. I, I think that would suck. That, for me, that would suck. I, I would miss it. I would miss it greatly. I, I get a tremendous amount of joy from not only driving these vehicles, but building them. I think it's really cool to re-engineer something and, and make it your own. Well, according to the EPA, they don't want me doing that. And I don't like that. 
Links in the description, not only to the stuff that I mentioned, but also to airatthecarguy.com if you have automotive questions. I'm curious about your feedback on this one and what your thoughts are and what your input is. So, comments, go. <laughs> Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.